Hi, everybody. Good evening, Tim Dotson. Happy Tuesday. Hi, Mark Steve. Hi, Bo Elliott. Tommy Elliott, Bo Davis. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Give it a few minutes for everybody to jump on. Hi, JR Garcia. Hi, Joe. Thank you guys for jumping on so quick. Appreciate you. We should have a full show tonight if everything works out correctly. I got the lightning game in the background and they just scored. So they're up 2 0 if anyone's wondering. Oh, that would be awesome, Tim. I think you guys would really like that track too. Hi, Joseph. I would love to see dwarfs at Arbido. Hi, John. I missed you. Hi, Bill. It was kind of nice to slack off though, I'm gonna be honest. Hi, Teddy Nelson. Hi, Larry from Alabama. Evening, everyone. The only reason it's hurting my eyes is because it's all the way across the room and I'm blind and trying to read the times. Hi, LK. Good to see you Saturday night. All right. We got quite a few people on. Howdy, Robert. How are you? Maybe. I'm doing good. How's everybody tonight? Doing good. It feels like a Monday. Uh, I don't need any more Mondays, but yeah, it does. <laughs> John said no more Saturday nights off, Jen. I'll work on that. Hey, Dennis. Hey, Aaron. You're welcome, Bo. Got a, uh, got a good show planned. Jake Perkins uh, should have Jeff Schofield on. A couple things to talk about. Uh, we got some results. Uh, Jen will cover here in a minute. And then uh, in between the guests, I want to make a big announcement of uh, something that is still in the works, but it, I'm gonna make it happen. Uh, it could be even bigger than what we announced tonight, but uh, can't wait to, to tell you guys some stuff. So stay on and make sure you share and uh, share our show, share the post, uh, help us keep uh, continuing to grow and get the word out about Florida racing to more and more people. Kaylee said, I like your shirt, Jen. I got my LJ Graham shirt on tonight. Hi, Chris. I was gonna, I was gonna wear my uh, new uh, Colton Bettis shirt, but. Once I knew I was going to have to do it on the phone again tonight, I just didn't, I didn't bother. Right. Aaron said, go LJ. So we'll start it off by talking about the go-karting event that we started our Saturday morning off with at Bushnell Motorsports Park. Great job by everyone who um, put that event together. We raised a ton of money for Jason Kemple's family and Miss Cynthia. Um, I think the final number, they raised $10,000. And it was just a lot of fun. Those guys put on a show. They had us laughing the whole time. Um, raffles re went really well. Thank you, Troy, for the stars. Um, we really, really had a great time. I didn't leave there till super late. I think the majority of us left there. I know Devin left, Devin and LJ left a little bit earlier and hauled butt to the track. Um, the rest of us were kind of straggling behind and what a great event, man. If you've never been to Bushnell Motorsports Park, make sure to make your plans to go out there. That place is absolutely amazing. They donated the facility for the event. We raised $10,000. The boys had a blast and pulled double duty racing carts all morning up until like two o'clock and then hauled butt to the track. So super awesome. Can't say enough great things about that event on Saturday. Huge shout out to Justin Holt. Katrina Butler, everyone that um, put in the time and effort to put that together. Hey, Griffiths, 
Um, and like I said, Bushnell Motorsports Park, top-notch facility, coolest track. I had never been there, so it was really cool to see everything. Um, those boys haul the mail. Braden's got some awesome GoPro footage, so make sure you check that out and just make your plans to attend. Support the the places that support our racers. Thank you, Charles, and, for the stars. And ten and ten thousand dollars raised for the family. What an, an awesome amount in a short period of time, and just a little event that was put together for with go karts. What a what an amazing racing family. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike, for the stars. I appreciate you guys. Um, so yeah, we had a great time. We left from there, went and got some food, relaxed for about 2.2 minutes and then hauled butt to Arbondale and made it in time for qualifying. Um, great car count at Arbondale this past weekend. Trying to pull up some results real quick. Well, before you get the results, a lot of people, uh, we put out a little teaser. Uh, Ronnie Vassello is going to be designing us some new shirts uh, this week, probably get some of the old design as well back everybody keeps asking for shirts but we're also going to get a limited edition of uh hoodies made the hoodies are a little more expensive than shirts so the price will be a little bit more i don't know the exact price yet and due to that we're only get a limited amount made but as soon as we sell out of the first batch i'll turn right around and have you make some more we'll make sure everybody gets them but uh so far everybody that's commented on there i'm taking the countdown and that's the the number we're going to try to get made plus a couple Chris is making fun of me and I'll get to that in a minute, but um, my phone says activate a stars party. I'm not sure what that is, but y'all keep sending stars because it's counting down from three minutes right now. <laughs> no clue what that is. Um, Fozzie makes fun of me because of the way I say Orbindale. No, my dad says Orbindale and I say Arbindale and Riley says Arbindale. So um, <laughs> yeah, make fun of me, whatever. Where's where's the R? That's what he said. Him and the boys tease me all day. I, I say it the same way, but he's got a point. Where's the R? Yeah. So talking about qualifying, Wilman Series, first race of the weekend, or first race, I say it like a pirate. First race of the year, great turnout, 27 cars. Tyler Schofield qualified on pole. Brandon Desheer in that 03 was second. Brandon Morris was third. Tim Sozio, fourth. Devin McLeod, fifth. But I'm going to be honest, I mean, the lap times were crazy close. Um, what a lap by, I met Tyler. I met there for a while. I was watching on my phone on a race monitor, and I, I thought Bones might end up with fast time. And Tyler was the last car out. And his second lap, he went to the top and then uh, stay, stayed right there. It was just crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, crazy, crazy race. I swear it was a full moon. I'm going to start off with scrambler results. Bray Ganey with the win. TJ Cruz was second. Dustin Kirkland third. Move over to the A mods. Shout out to our 417 people. Um, had a ton of our drivers from 417 come up, hang out. And some of them race Saturday night at Orbindale. Just kidding, Orbindale. Um, and it was really good to see them. It was like a family reunion. Um, 417 doesn't start back up until the 22nd. So it was kind of cool to see everyone. Uh, Carla and Ray was the winner of the A mods. Bobby Mobley was second. Jason Deaton was third. Tom Reiser and Eric Rudd, top five. Going to Pure Stocks, we had 25 Pure Stocks take the green at Arbonnell Saturday night. Now he's got me questioning. Oh, it says Stars Party achieved. So now we have reached the Stars Party. I don't even know what that is, but that's really cool. Thank you, Andrew. Um, George Gorham won pure stock feature. Brandon Desheer pulling double duty, finished second. Bobby Mobley third. James Wright fourth. And Roger Blevins fifth. Legends featured Nolan Mesa, Willie Cuddy, Evan Bookmiller, and Lacey Kuehl, and Mike Verhaeg. Um, all, and I can, all I can do is the stars party, sit here and laugh, thinking Ricky Brooks is watching this, you doing a stars party with the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ricky. Okay, Jake Perkins was your winner. Kevin Macy was second. Brandon Morris, Ricky Anderson, and LJ Grimm was your top five. Um, yeah, we finished 67 laps. They cut it short. People are asking, did we? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, hush your face, Aaron. We cut it short due to time limit. Uh, we had a lot of caution laps. We had a couple red flags. Some crazy stuff going on. One car ended up on top of Keith Lilly's car. What else, Robert? Hey, it was just a, cra a crazy night or a crazy race. And a, uh, 
But I mean, thank everybody for coming out and the support and a huge shout out and thanks to Rex and Collette Guy and the staff at Armandale Speedway and Kim and everybody involved that made the opening night there a huge success. A lot of fans in the stands, uh, pits were packed. I mean, you mentioned all the people that came out from 417. It was nice to see them on an off night. Joe and Janet there. Janet walking around the pits, talking to the people she knew from 417. I mean, just a, a fun night at the track and a uh, great night uh, for Armandale Speedway and uh, Rex and Colette put on a great show. Absolutely. It was really good to see everyone walking around for autograph session, all the kids being so excited to meet their favorite sportsman drivers. Um, I was, I think I was most heartbroken this weekend for Keith Lilly because you know, new body, new car, and man, that thing was tore up after. Hopefully it's just sheet metal. Hopefully it's just body damage, but well, that was heartbreaking. And I don't want to get, uh, leave anybody out of it. We still have some that have committed and we got to get with, but a huge shout out to a uh, Steve Darling with SRQ Tax and a Gary McFall, Backhaul McFall uh, Trucking and uh, Keith Lilly for their contributions already for a uh, towards our video equipment and uh, what we want to do to move forward. Uh, we couldn't do this without you guys. And I know there's more in the process of working on, but a huge shout out to those three for already stepping up and helping us out. Yeah, we appreciate you guys so much. You have no idea. Every time I jumped on live Saturday, we kept getting the stars. Those, you know, I think Robert can cash them out monthly. Um, James Harvey says Cody getting run over was awful. Yeah. It was a really rough race, but I have no doubt. I mean, first of all, it's the first race back of the season for the majority of them. Um, and I have no doubt that they'll get it figured out and we're going to have some really awesome races coming up. Thank you, Tracy. We got more stars. I don't know who was in the, I don't know if it was the eight or the 81 or whatever the car was, uh, but uh, they were just trying to help Keith Lilly get started on that topless race. Oh, so can we talk about the GoPro? So Robert had our GoPro on top of Keith Lilly's car. And um, as it was pulling in, Robert's messaging and he's like, do you see the GoPro on it? And I'm like, no, you know, cause it has to come by us in the pit grandstands. And I was like, nope, sure don't. So afterwards, a bunch of us, thank you to the Ludeckers and everyone and Fozzie and his boys. We went out and searched the field and come to find out it was up on the light pole in the dirt on the light pole. Um, so we were able to find the GoPro minus the battery and a cover for it, but hey, yeah, it still, still works. works. It still works. You got to give it props. Pretty tough. Sunshine, Sunshine State Racing GoPro will live to make another race. Right. Um, David asked what happened to the old man in the 92. He was there. He was working on cars and helping and hanging out with everybody. He only, I heard, there's a rumor out there. If he's only going to race races this year that have heat races. I don't blame him. Uh, that so, way he can get he can lock up some wins. The next wheelman race is going to be at Citrus County Speedway, 75 laps on 219. So February 19th, Citrus County Speedway, 75 laps. Make your plans for that. You want me to go over a new Smyrna results? Yeah, I haven't seen a... Uh... Uh, Jake jump on yet so yeah go on and I'm, I'm watching for him to jump on so I can try to admit him here to the room. Bomber A feature at New Smyrna was won by Jim Snyder. Eddie Evans was second. Chuck Rush was third. Um, David Rogers super late model was won by Bubba Pollard. Huge shout out to him as well man. He came um, to Bushnell. I, I believe he practiced Friday at New Smyrna. Came over to Bushnell on Saturday morning race go-karts with them boys, had an absolute blast, loaded up, hauled butt, and went to New Smyrna and took home the win in the A feature for the David Rogers Super Late Models. Um, local Brad May was second, Jesse Dutilly third. E-Mods, Jeffrey White with the win, Dylan LeBlue in second, and Michael Mark in third. Vintage Cars was won by Thomas Toronto, Christopher Hatton in second, and Chris Hatton in third. I do love Bubba Pollard. Um, LKQ Super Stock feature was won by Do Doug Samian, and it was his birthday as well. So sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Justin Spears and Bert Butch finished third. Modifieds, Jerry Simons, Jeffrey White, and Aaron Overman. Pro Late Model feature was won by Brad May, Michael Hind, 
and Dustin Smith was top three. And that was it for those features. And a, and a huge shout out to a, a Dennis for going over to New Smyrna. We were Sunshine State Racing was able to cover both tracks racing this weekend. And we're hoping to be able to split up a little more this year and, and hit multiple race tracks racing on the same night to give you guys more coverage you deserve. But a huge shout out for Dennis. Killed the coverage over there this weekend. And a uh, thank you for everybody doing the stars. And yeah, I believe it's once a month that uh, if I don't cash it out, they automatically uh, do a cash out for us. Yeah, pretty cool. And I think the stars party, whatever we get, I'll have to look it up after the show, but whatever we get, I think it doubles it. So that's pretty cool as well. Keith said, glad you found the GoPro. Sorry about that. Definitely not your fault. Wish we could have got footage. I was hoping the footage worked up until it hit the dirt pile, but unfortunately it didn't. Braden said it was corrupted. So we didn't get the footage of it flying through the air. Running through my list real quick before we get our first guest on. Oh, let's talk about the Chili Bowl, Bowl memo. I took a screenshot of it so we could talk about it. Chili Bowl director Matt Ward further explained their fighting role today's, in today's meeting. If you have an altercation, you have the green light to stop in turn four or on the front stretch, one-on-one -on -one in between the drivers. If you do it on the ramp, you're gone. It causes a brawl that we can't contain. Thoughts on that? No, we got to we save that question for Schofield. <laughs> All right. All right. So Ron Lock. Jake's on. Yep. Ron Lock, thank you so much, sir, for your stars. And thankfully, I say your name and not Robert because he butchers it every time. Can, yeah, I just call him, can I just start calling him Captain Ron? Nope. So <laughs> James says, I like, the I like it, gloves off. It should make for really interesting TV this week on Flow Racing. Um, also shout out to them, man. I watched their coverage of Tulsa and watched some of their coverage of Chili Bowl so far and man, literally amazing. Can't say enough about it. Great coverage from them. Um, Lee Keller said drivers have at it. So on that note, we'll introduce our winner of first wheelman race of 2022, Mr. Jake Perkins. How are you? Doing pretty good. Thanks for having me. Uh, had a little technical difficulties getting fired up there, so <laughs> hopefully we're better now. <laughs> That's okay. We always have technical difficulties over here. Techni technical difficulties is the story of our life on Mondays and Tuesday nights, but thanks for joining us. And I'll let Jen kind of lead it. First of all, kind of want to talk about your team. It seemed like you'd stepped away from racing for a little while, so tell me a little bit about that, and then you come back, and you're top-notch everywhere we go. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, um, it, my group of guys is just awesome. We have, we're all really good friends and have known each other for a long time. Uh, I mean, you kind of alluded to it, but we raced years ago in late models and then ran dirt late models for a little bit. And in 2015, wound up going to school at University of Florida for engineering. And <laughs> it just got to be too much for everybody. So we walked away for a little bit and played around in some go-karts when we could. And then once I graduated in 2019 and we uh, all found a little bit more time for each other, we got a sportsman and thought that might be a cool competitive class for us to do. And I mean, yeah, we've run pretty well. It's been a lot of fun in 2020. We um, had some good finishes and I felt like we were good enough to get some wins that year. And last year we didn't race as much. Things just got a little busy for everybody. And then yeah, this year it's, it's off to a good start, uh, kind of going off of the momentum from last year. We got a couple wins and to get one now is just, it's amazing. It's more than I could ever ask for. Um, there was a point in time when I went to school, I didn't know if I was going to race again or when or what or, you know, what that might look like. And so just to come back and be a part of a series that's this competitive and win some races is more than I could have ever asked for. So, yeah, but it's all about the guys. They, they work their tails off and we're all big one family. And uh, it's just, it's amazing. So. <laughs> I'm going to run through some comments as we're kind of talking today. So Joseph said, congratulations, Jake. John Chance said, this sport is so much better with people like Jake in it. Absolutely agree. You guys are top notch. Every everywhere you go, some of the nicest people at the track. Man, <laughs> those are some nice comments. That's I appreciate that. That's we we really try to pride ourselves on just being good people and doing it the right way. Um, you know, I, I'm just blessed to have all these people on my team and as family and friends, right? So I've known Sean for a long time, and we've just gotten to be family. And the guys that come help us, Mike. Uh, 
Sean, uh, Mikey, Big Mike. Uh, he's had some health issues, so we miss having him at the racetrack with us. But And then all of our families and friends. I mean, we have tons of people in our pits every weekend, and it's really all about having fun and enjoying each other. And when we're not at that point anymore, then it's just not worth racing anymore. So uh, we're making a lot of good memories together, and just uh, I'm super grateful to be doing this. So it's a lot of fun, and uh, look forward to what the rest of the year is going to look like. Never too shabby to have a rudiment on your crew either, is it? <laughs> he's he's a trip so he's he's fun on the spotter stand and he's fun in the pits and he's um he's pretty good at crew chiefing on the sportsman car too so uh we've had a little bit of fun racing lots of different cars over the years from the go-karts to the pavement supers and the dirt supers and now the sportsman um but uh yeah it took took us a little bit of time to figure out the sportsman car a couple years ago and um as you said i think we're kind of hitting our stride now and hopefully we just keep it going but rudiment's a trip he's a lot of fun he really is. He's so much fun to be around. Fozzy, Fozzy Photos said Jake had to avoid a lot of crap to get to the front. Great drive. Um, David said, change your shirt to a UM shirt. And then right under that, Lee Keller said, go Gators. <laughs> I, I made a point to wear a Gator shirt because of the Bulldogs winning the championship yesterday. It's in my religion as a Gators fan to hate Georgia Bulldogs and hate Florida State Seminoles. So I was pulling for Alabama as much as I hated to yesterday. And I will continue to do that in any game that Georgia plays. I'm sorry to any Georgia fans. <laughs> All right. Well, that was going to be my next question. Being a Gators fan and uh, alum or whatever in the SEC, who were you pulling for last night? I know that was a really hard choice for a lot of people, but I think a lot of Gator fans were going for the for Alabama. Yeah, that was an easy pick for me. As much as I hate seeing Alabama win all the time, I just – there's not one part of me that can pull for Georgia at all, so – I have some friends that are big Georgia fans some coworkers that are big Georgia fans and I'm happy for them, but that's about the extent of it. <laughs> James said, great job, Jake. Ed McKenzie says, congratulations, fellow UF engineering alumni. Cool. Heck yeah. No, engineering school at UF was a ton of fun and I still like to get back up there and it's been a few years and see friends that are, my girlfriend's still in law school there. And so I get to go back up and visit once in a while and um, you know, UF is awesome. I'm so happy I wound up going there and made a lot of friends and uh, they even get to come to the races sometimes and it's been, it's been a whole lot of fun. That's so let's, awesome. Let's we talk have about some Alabama fans jumping on saying roll tide. My aunt <laughs> and my Alabama. I was kind of just thankful that you didn't have to hear that all day today. I, I had to hear uh, so many people at work talk about go dogs. And it was probably the worst day I've had in a long time. I'm not going to lie to you. I was miserable, absolutely miserable. So I'm ready for kickoff <laughs> next year and to see Georgia go back to their humble beginnings. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll have another 42 year stretch. <laughs> so, so let's talk about the race a little bit. Uh, a really long race for you guys. I'm sure in the car, really competitive field, a, a lot rougher than I know Ricky Brooks wanted it to be for the first race, but from your vantage point of where you were to make it up through there, how was the race? Just talk a little bit through your thought process and a, uh, what you thought throughout the race, getting to the front. Yeah, I mean, uh, the car was good all weekend. Um, I missed it a little bit in qualifying, and so that put us back in a place where, you know, that invert fortunately put us closer to the front. So that was the first part of it. But, you know, from then, it's just holding on. I knew I had a good race car, and I knew it was going to be good for 75 laps. So um, the restarts are a little bit different this year than what they were last year, and, um, you know, that made it a little bit different of a challenge on the front row. Um, but racing with Adam and racing with Kevin, uh, that was a lot of fun. They're excellent drivers, and I've raced with Kevin for a long time, going back to when we raced Supers in the early 2010s. And, um, you know, it was just all about kind of managing the car. Once you're up there, you want to go as hard as you can to keep your position, but you also don't want to burn your equipment up in case we have those late restarts. So um, Briggs got away from me a little bit there in the middle of the race, and I knew I wasn't just going to motor him back down. And so from there, it was just save the car and save the tires and hope that you get a yellow and an opportunity to get it on a late restart. And, um, you know, fortunately, that came for us. So. It kind of just, it came together at the end. I hate seeing that many tore up race cars. Um, you know, at Auburndale, it just kind of tends to happen when you get all those race cars on a tiny little track. So um, it was just a good race for us. Car was good and we were able to keep nose clean. And when you go somewhere like Auburndale, that's half a battle. And you know, yeah. Ricky was on the show this week, last week, and he talked about the dice roll from the fan. We'll get a kid out there and we'll roll the dice and it'll be the dice roll plus six. With you qualifying 10th, what was your thought process waiting on that dice roll? Four. Please roll a four. And if not a four, a five or a six. Because if it was a three or less, then we were going to have to stay in 10th. And, you know, the crazy thing about that was we were only, I think, two or three hundredths of a second off of fifth. 
And so the field is just so tight. And now that they added the six inch spoiler back to it, like it was in 2020, uh, the times were just crazy. I was amazed at how many people picked up. And, you know, last year, if you were qualifying in anything sub 14 seconds at Auburndale, that was pretty good. And we had 23 of the 27 cars qualify in the 13 second bracket, which was just, I mean, that's crazy. And we had, I mean, I think Schofield ran a time in the 13.5 and a bunch of people in the 60s and 70s. And those are like, you know, decent times in a super at Auburndale. So <laughs> we're flying in these sportsmen with all this added downforce. And I, I like the dice roll a lot where they, uh, I mean, it's the same concept of you guys going up the tower and pulling a pill, but it gets the fans involved and lets everybody see it up there. And nobody really knows until right before the race what it's going to be. Uh, I really like that idea. Right. I love it. I'm a huge fan of it. And drivers can get mad at themselves for pulling a bad number in the tech area, but who's going to get mad at a little kid for rolling a dice on the front straightaway? I love it. So get all the good fans point. involved. Very the more good fans point. Involved, the better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, James said, glad the Wheelman series is coming to South Alabama Speedway this year. Me too, man. I, Jake, I'm not sure if you race there with your late model or the sportsman, but man, it is literally one of my favorite all time tracks. So really excited to see you guys at South Alabama. Yeah, I've not been there before. Um, race at Five Flags and race at Mobile on the Super, and I've heard a lot of really good things about South Alabama. Um, I'm going to have to watch some footage or something to get a little bit familiar with the track before we go up there, but uh, I'm excited to go. Like you, I've heard nothing but good things, and a little bit faster, a little bit more wide-open racetrack that will um, allow us to space out a little bit more. But, yeah, I'm pumped to go there. I'm glad that the Sportsman Series is kind of expanding out of this this little region. Um, so I'm looking forward to going there. I'm glad. I think we've got a race there and then a few at Citrus and a few at Auburndale. And it's just going to be a competitive deal. I hope we keep seeing high car counts, too. Are you planning to, to run the whole Wheelman Series this year? Yeah, yeah, that was our goal. And we, we kind of stepped away from it last year just to, you know, get our ducks in a row. And towards the end of last year, we didn't run a whole lot of races and, um, you know, ran that Auburndale Sportsman 100 and then the Fall Brawl and focused on just getting everything ready to make an attempt at running the full wheelman schedule. So we're going to do that as long as we can, um, as long as we're having fun and as long as we can, you know, keep the car and all of our crew members in one piece, then we're going to give it a shot. <laughs> That's the, the good point. Um, Chris Fazillo said, Devin said, make the cars harder to drive to stop the rough driving. What is Jake Phil will correct this? I think it's a lot of the fact that like you said, the times are so close, so you can't really out motor anyone. You've just got to either out drive them or you got to kind of move them around. Right. Yeah. You know, I have mixed emotions about that because I love the competition. Um, it's a double edged sword, right? It, it's all super competitive because the rules book is so tight. And that's why you see such high car counts in the sportsmen and nothing against the super late models. Those are a lot of fun. And I, I love to drive those things. But they're just so much more expensive and the rules are so much more wide open that it's harder for smaller teams to keep up. And um, you, you see 27 cars come to a 2,500 to win sportsman race because so many of us feel like we have a chance. And so if you start opening up the rule book, I'm afraid you will take away some of those people that uh, you need to see. You know, I think that people running 15th to 27th are equally as important as those running first to 13th because, you know, fans like watching 25 cars on a racetrack. They don't like watching 12. So um, I think the big part of it really is just the spoiler, though. I, I think when they put that six inch back on there, it made the cars drive so much easier. Uh, just going there and practicing Friday night before the Auburndale race, I was amazed at how much more grip the car had. So um, they look pretty and they look really cool. But I would be a fan if they just took the spoilers off completely and let us run, you know, maybe a second slower. But we'd all slip and slide. The tires would wear more and it would just be more in the hands of the drivers. So leave it 75 laps and take the spoilers off and let us go. <laughs> Well, that and I, I mean, you said how many cars were in the 13 second range, but even the, the three cars that didn't make the show, I mean, had respectable times. I know Gary yeah. Fall was really disappointed about not making it, but I mean, it wasn't that he was that far off. It was just everybody was that good. Yeah, and they, and they loaded their cars up looking a heck of a lot better than most everybody else that night, too. So, <laughs> well, I, I really think, other than maybe you and guys in the top three, they were probably the real winners. Uh, they, they got a little bit of money. They got tires to practice on for the next race that don't have any laps on them, and their cars are all exactly. in one place. Exactly. Exactly right. <laughs> so you had a pretty good view out of that front windshield and your rear view mirror of all the drama and all the craziness going around, going on around you during that whole entire race. So what was that kind of like trying to avoid everything just to make your way to the front? 
I just, uh, I knew people were driving a little bit over their heads and the biggest thing was just trying to stay ahead of it. Once we had that track position, I didn't want to give it up and get back up in the hornet's nest. So um, when you got a clear windshield out in front of you, everything's kind of within your control. You control your own destiny. And um, the less you leave to fade and the less you leave in the hands of the drivers around you, the better off you are. So um, it's a dog fight to get up there, but you just got to be smart about it. And, um, you know, thing is you got to have the nose on the car by the end of the race to have a chance to win these things and um once i once that caution came out with about 30 to go i kind of knew that all heck might break loose because we had such a clean run to start that race and a bunch of 20 cars up with a chance to win with basically a heat race on the line so <laughs> i think it was a bit of a recipe for disaster I'm gonna have you know oh, hold on we got jeff mute your phone for a minute <clears throat> Did you know at the point, Jake, the last couple of cautions, did they come over the receiver? Did your spotters tell you, hey, this is going to be it? Like, no more cautions. We're done with it. The next flag's going to end the race. Yeah, no, we knew with, uh, I think it was the second to last caution. We knew that if we got one more that we were going to get a green-white checkered. That, I think Ricky let all the spotters know at that point. So that last green-white checkered, we all knew that, that uh, the race was on the line at that point. And Kevin was so good. I really thought that... Um, you know, it was basically a 50-50. It was just a matter of kind of who got the better run off of four to be able to get through one and two. And the outside was really good on the restarts, a lot like it is at Citrus, where if you can just get a nose ahead of the guy on the inside and pin him down through the corner, you can get a massive run down the back stretch on that first lap up to speed. So um, really, that race was decided taking the green down the front straightaway. And I knew that if we could just get ahead of Kevin there, that we would have a pretty good chance. And even then, he still fought back on the outside. I went back and watched the video and thought, oh, my gosh, I about gave that thing away. Absolutely. <laughs> so it was it was awfully competitive. So kind of in wrapping up, you talked about the huge family and crew you got behind you. But a, uh, who, who do you want to thank for sponsors and who all makes all this possible? Man, it's it's a total team effort. So no, thank you for giving me the chance to thank those people. Um, Riley Art Center is a big big group that came on board to help us out this year. Uh, they're a performing arts center out of Ocala. Um, we've gotten to know those people over the years and uh, they've been you know kind enough to jump on board and uh, help us get this car to speed and make it possible. Uh, Sean Rudiman, my gun through people, my dad, he puts a ton of sacrifice forward and makes this thing happen. Um, I live in Tampa now, so I just, I don't get a chance to go work on the race car as much anymore. Um, but so many of these guys take time out of their weeks to just go drive there on a Wednesday night and go work on the car. And, um, you know, I'll try and FaceTime with them and hang out when I can. If they're going to have a late night, then I try to have a late night with them. And we go work in the weekends when we can, but it's all a part-time gig and we all just do it because we love it. And I'm just, like I said, I'm fortunate to have all these people jump on board and have fun with us. But, um, my family, my girlfriend supports me tremendously. Um, uh, Sean, Mike, Mikey, Big Mike, Big Block, um, and then, gosh, all of our friends. We just have so many people in the pits that come make it possible. So we hope to keep having fun this year. I'm excited. Um, are you doing the top list race at 417? We're not. So uh, that's kind of kind of the thing whenever we're all a bunch of part-time guys, just we got to pick and choose what we want to run. And it's just too much of a turnaround for us to go run the topless race and then go run at Citrus on the 19th. So we're just going to tear the car down a little bit and get it ready for that race. We didn't even really have any off season to get ready from the fall brawl 200 to this race. So we took the body off of it and straightened it out and repainted it and just slapped it back on and said, let's go to Auburndale. <laughs> and it worked out for us, but we need a few weeks to kind of, recuperate and get our stuff ready to go for, for citrus that's awesome well we really look forward to having you on more this year congratulations on the first women win of 2022 thank you so much for coming on and taking time to talk to everyone no of course anytime i love to be on and uh i'm I'll gladly jump on anytime you'll ask so appreciate the time and i'll tell you you know just a second to thank you guys for what y'all do for florida racing it's a it's a big deal i know what y'all do is not easy and so uh you know all the time and effort y'all put in does not go unnoticed and this everything you do for the sport it's in a better place especially here in florida for what you guys are doing and um i think i speak for all the drivers and all the teams we really appreciate you guys thank you so much jake for saying that we appreciate you guys so much and look forward to seeing you in citrus yep we'll see you all soon take care have a good night guys thank you yeah you too that's jake perkins winner of the wheelman series and we'll roll right in jen i'll let you jeff's back with us now and uh we'll go right into jeff and then we'll catch up with the comments and round up at the end Sounds good. Lee Keller, thank you for the stars. Um, Jeff Schofield, you with us? Yep. Can you hear me? Hi, Troublemaker. How are you? 
Yeah, that's what I was fixing to ask. Is this PG version or rated R version? <laughs> We're going, let me just go ahead, hold on, time out. So viewer discretion is advised. We do not have a beat button and anyone that knows Jeff, we're not going to do any F-bombs, but Jeff gets heated. So let's get into it, Jeff. I'll, I'll behave tonight. So I, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know where to start, where to begin. Um, I, I still think it's a uh, pretty awesome deal that Brooks and Rex came together and still continued the series with the fallout of the sponsorship and so forth. Um, so, you know, hats off to them guys. N none of them guys can control the drivers. You know, that what's out there on the field is the uh, spotters and the and the drivers, and we've seen a uh, prime example of what we have to deal with in Florida Saturday night. So we'll, we'll so hopefully it only gets better from here. Everyone wants to know why can't we see your face? So when you get, you know, your face gets red, your head starts steaming, all that good stuff. Well, he's traveling tonight, so he had to take time out to come <laughs> on. He said he wouldn't be able to be on camera, but glad he could take a few minutes to come out and uh, talk with us about the Wheelman series and racing in general. And Jeff, I just want to start uh, you. You're a well-known driver here in Florida, lots of wins in the late models. And now you have a couple sportsmen and your friend Keith Lilly. You guys all work together in the same shop. But what's it like to be able to do this with your son Tyler and run in the same class and, and be able to compete against each other? You know, it's a blast. I mean, it's everybody asks me, like, when you get behind the wheel, when you get behind the wheel. And I have more fun being at the track with Keith and Tyler. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, there's plenty of times I want to be in the track to resolve issues that other people cause and so forth. But it's – uh it's a blast helping them guys and watching my son, you know, grow up and exceed. So I'm trying to, um, I guess, I don't know what you want to say, trying to keep lead him in the better direction than the examples I've set for Florida racing. But in the same token, unfortunately, you know, with Florida racing, you've got to set examples and he's going to have to do that to a few drivers to, um, to get his name known. You know, you can't beat on certain people. And right now there's, he's a newcomer, new guy coming up and people beat on him, and he's, uh, he's going to have to make a name for his own self. So speaking of that, is it more frustrating for you racing or watching Tyler and being a parent on the sidelines and being kind of out of control of what's going on in his car? Um, you know, I don't really mind either way. I mean, because, you know, obviously once I lose my temper, it doesn't matter where I'm at in the car or in the grandstand. So I'm, I'm pretty neutral either way. I'm, I'm going to battle his battles for him and everybody knows that. So you know, whoever wants to, to get in mingles with him is going to mingle with me. And, you know, that, that's uh, that's just the way it's going to be for as long as I can walk. They're going to deal with it. And it's a blast. It's still fun. Um, I, I don't know either way. Like I said, being on the track, I've raced with him a couple of times now. And that's probably more frustrating than watching him because I don't want to be the guy that, you know, causes my son to be an incident or something like that. So I'd say watching is actually probably more fun and entertaining, less stressful for me. And did you hear us? You probably missed it earlier. We were talking about the Chili Bowl, um, their new rule. So I'm going to read it to you and get your take on it. Chili Bowl director Matt Ward further explained their fighting rule in today's driver's meeting. If you have an altercation, you've got the green light to stop in turn four or the front stretch one-on-one -on -one between the drivers. If you do it on the ramp, you're gone. It causes a brawl that we can't contain. Uh, you know, I, I've seen a glimpse of that as I was trying to get on the Facebook and follow you guys real quick. Um, you know, there, there's altercations between drivers. It's going to happen. It's either one, let us tear our equipment up. Once if you back up in the days, you know, farewell that I've tore up a lot of people's equipment because I don't tolerate it. If you want to rough me up, I'm going to rough you up. And just the way it's going to be. So I would much rather start on the flex or stop at the flag stand, get out toe to toe, either take a whooping or give a whooping and call it a day. But Unfortunately, in today's racing, you know, there's probably only two drivers left out there that'll actually get out and go toe to toe. It's not like the old schools with uh, Wayne, Dick Anderson, and Daryl Shelnut, and you know the guys that you knew when you bumped into them when you stopped on the back straightaway. We were going toe to toe, and that was good days because at the end of the night, we know where we stood. It was done. We didn't tear our cars up the next week, and we went racing. Now it's just let's run off daddy's money, and they, they all hide behind the the law, man. You know, everybody like. I can't even mention, but there's a couple of them down at 417 that's going to call the cops and everything else that run their mouth. But then as soon as you get in their face, all they want to do is scream, call the cops. And it's just a sad side we live in today that nobody uh, wants to stand up for their actions. But I condone that. I agree with that. Same thing Yoho tried to do. It's like, you know, let's keep it on the front straight away. We'll keep it real. You know, why not? So, so on that note, you know. what can we do to get the respect back where it was back in the day? like when dad raced and you raced and everyone raced where the drivers did have it out right then and there. And yeah, you know, you had your feuds, but it wasn't 
the same two drivers kind of getting into it week in and week out. I, I don't know that we'll ever go back to that for the simple reason is people don't work on their own stuff anymore. You know, just like Perkins, I love Perkins to death, but it's like he don't work on his own car anymore. You know, you, you talk to all these kids, oh, I'm in school, I've got work, dad takes care of the car, I take it over here and I work on the car. You know, Tyler tore his car up Saturday, we was over there Sunday, he's over there tonight, or last night, tonight, working on his own car. So when he goes out and tears, I got no problem, tear the body off of it, but you're going to put the body back on. Until parents make their kids do that, or until sponsors make their, their drivers do that, you're not going to have any respect, because if you don't have to do the work, money's money's money. That's the least of anybody's worries. It's the workmanship that you got to put into these things to make them fast, make them look good until people make their drivers go back and doing that. And I, I take it back. Perkins is probably the cleanest driver in the wheelman series, but just for an example, like he said, he doesn't work on his car. And so these other rough drivers until they go back down to work on their cars and rebuild them, I don't think we'll ever have the respect that we used to have. And so what was your overall thoughts of Saturday night's show? Um, I talked to Ricky Brooks probably for about an hour and Rex for about an hour. Um, as far as the Wheelman series goes, like I said, you can't blame Ricky Brooks or blame Rex for anything that happened on the track. There were some bad calls. Yes, there were some late cautions. There's a few things that I went over, Brooks, but, you know, back up. We had a driver's meeting for the first time in several years now, and it was brought up to Ricky Brooks. The slow cars were the outside, not the inside. Immediately, he changed it. Hey, if that's what you guys are used to, that's the way we're going to run it. I can't remember the last time we've talked to a promoter, a race director, or anything, and they actually agreed with what the driver said. So that was a plus right off the bat. It's like, hey, you know, if you're willing to listen, we've got to we've got to crawl before we can walk. I talked to him at the end of the night. Three starts, very bad ideal firing going into three. They were way too fast. Fourth back was out of the ballpark because the cars, the nose wasn't planted. The cars were tight. He's going to change that invert 11 invert entirely too much the top four cars ran up front except for a couple cars that got in this and it spun out inverting 11 cars at Arbidale is impossible it's just not going to happen I mean it's just it's carnage it doesn't matter who it inverts or so forth it's like what's the point of qualifying we're going to get into a sandbag situation so he agreed with that so we're going to work on that so a few things that we talked about you know he's Ricky Brooks has opened up and he's like okay hey we're, we're going to entertain these and we'll make some adjustments because we, we've got to make it single – and another thing, he was talking about after multiple cautions, we'll go to a single file restart. So it might get boring, but to have seven cars finished at the end of the night was ridiculous. And the drivers ride on the radiator caps, unfortunately, so we have to cater to that until the drivers learn that there's a little bit more horizon beyond the radiator cap and can <laughs> can drive a little bit better. But I, I think we got a good future. I mean, Ricky Brooks is very good and very understanding. Um, so all we can do is hope for the best and hope it works out. And yeah, I'll let you catch up on some of the comments while you're reading those. What's it like, Jeff? You talk about Ricky Brooks listening to you guys and changing stuff in the driver's meeting. And I know there's other promoters and stuff that, that have done that in the past. But what's it like to have a race director, promoter of a series that, that'll make changes like that right away for the, for the better? I mean, it's got to be a good feeling to the car owners and the drivers. Well, you, you know, it's, it's not right or wrong either way but let's put it this way if you have 20 drivers in there and you've got 15 of the drivers wanting something right or wrong let it go you know let us be the fault instead of always being the track promoter track you know itself so if we all vote one way and then all of a sudden the drivers went another way you know so let it go that way so he did he let it go that way i don't think we had any incidents with the slow cars going to the outside it's always been that way at arvindale so it's like it worked out great but it, it's back down to rome uh, rick day when they were in the series you know, it was always nice to go into a driver's meeting to where, you know what, Don Rome would stand back like, you know, if you guys want it that way, we'll try it. And when it screws up and it's wrong, don't come blaming me. We'll blame yourselves. And, you know, we work together that way. And that's the only way racing is going to excel is the we, we have to work together. And I think we have that potential with Ricky Brooks. And what about like a group of drivers, like a coalition of drivers that get together and discuss changes and discuss things that could make the sport better? Yeah, that, that's what we kind of we kind of did that Saturday night with a group of us there um, and we plundered around with it. And really, the only thing we can do is we're, we're going to boycott a bunch of drivers. So not going to be many cars at the next track because we just don't feel like some of the drivers can drive. So that's kind of what we come up with. But <laughs> other than that, it, it, it's uh, as far as the driver change, I mean, the, the track changes or what so forth. It's going to be a it's going to be a long process. But I mean, let's put it this way. And I don't want to throw nobody under the bus, but last year. It didn't matter what we wanted to do. There was no changes accepted. There was no ifs, ands, or buts. There was nothing. And the Wheelman Series is a great series. 
but all the drivers were frustrated, aggravated, but there was no other series to go run. So everybody stuck it out with the wheel man. But, you know, it's nice as a driver, owner, whatever, just to come in there and be able to say that I want to put a suggestion out there and have it entertained. If it gets voted down, then it gets voted down. But at least it's entertained to where last year it, it doesn't matter. You know, there was no entertainment whatsoever to any suggestions or ideas any of the drivers or owners had. So we're already, like I said, we're, we're on a, a positive note at the very first race, regardless of how the outcome is, like I said, the track and the owners and, and Rex, you know, Ricky Brooks, nobody can control what happens Saturday night. That's just on the drivers. Absolutely. LK said, go team Schofield, LK, Kevin from Plant City. Um, you were also very outspoken with us in regards to all the tech comments and the tech complaints after Big Lee and after Derby. Let's touch on that for a minute because you're pretty outspoken. You want tech. You want it to be, you know, above board and you want them to go through everything. So let's talk about that for a minute and kind of get your thoughts on the tech process. So let's go for sportsmen. Spec motor, stock transmission, you know, no polish and ringing gears, no, n nothing fancy. We got rules that we have to go by, no, no traction control, you know, no building the motors, all, all the BS that goes into the stuff that we could cheat. We could all cheat. It's easy and simple. But by having Ricky Brooks, I know that Tyler set pole Saturday night, did a great job. But I am promise you, everybody that finished second, third, fourth, fifth in qualifying knows they didn't get out cheated. So that makes, you know, if Tyler would have qualified fifth and Bones would have qualified pole, I would have just been Bones qualified good. There's no doubt because when you go through tech, room of doom, no matter where you're at with Ricky Brooks, you're, you don't know what he's going to check. You have no idea. He's going to pull something out of his hat. He's going to pull something apart. He's going to check for stuff that you wouldn't even think about. And I could known that because I don't want to get beat by a car. I don't want to get beat by money. I don't want to get beat by, by somebody who just figured out something before we did. You know, this isn't NASCAR. We don't have the engineers like they do. We can't stay ahead of the game that far. So tech, uh, I'm all for it. I want tech to be brutal. I want it to be strict before and after. Certain things after the race, ride height, roof heights, you know, that stuff like that's got to be you know overlooked because of the race situations and brooke does that if he pulls a spring out and it's supposed to be nine and a quarter inches what's hot if it comes a nine to eight brooks ain't gonna throw you out but if you come in an eight and a half spring he's gonna throw you out so brooks been more unfair i've raced with him for years in the supers and he's actually lenient on on you know on the sportsmen's that i can tell compared to what he used to be because it's a step down it's not a super so people that want to cry and whine about tech one they've got something to hide or they just don't understand racing because, uh, you know, the wheel or the um, snowball derby's biggest race of the year. Everybody expects Smith to expect to get his car tour all the way down. And anybody that doesn't, doesn't understand racing. It's not Ricky Brooks, this Ricky Brooks, that, you know, you win the derby, you won the derby. I can promise you that you didn't cheat any whatsoever. And that means a lot, you know, you can, you can hang your head high. And that's even with our local series, Cert certain things, he might be a little over, you know, technical one, but the same token, uh, I'm all for it. People can frown about it all they want, but it's, you know, if you start getting beat and you want to cry and whine, it's like, well, you want to cry and whine about tech. That's what he's there for. Yeah. And, there's, and there's no way to, I mean, we talked to him about it last week. There's no way to get everything in pre-race tech. Plus some of the things that you guys want him to check engines and stuff like that and transmissions, you, you can't do in pre-race because there's no time to get it put back together. So, I mean, I agree that you got to have a tough, pre-race tech to check what you can, but you still got to have that after, after tech as well. Cause there's some things you just can't do before. Well, let's put it this way. If you look, let's look at NASCAR, they start on, let's say they race on Sundays. They start on Thursday, tearing the fuel cells out, tearing the rear ends apart, tearing the ignition boxes that are cha changing them. You know, all the, all the BS stuff. We don't have that capability. We don't have the funds to do it. We don't have time to do it. So people forget that. So pre-race tech, it's like, if I polish my transmission gears, I know that, you know that if I gun drilled my, my input shaft, we know that. So why should he have to pretext something that I know is right? I know our car is 99.9% .9 right. And I don't care about pretext, pretext for body height, roof heights and stuff like that. So everybody wants to, you know, whine and cry about that, but pretext, that's just for your own good. We, you pretext at the shop, you know, our stuff is good when we leave the shop. All we want to do is have that pre-tech, make sure our left side's right, total weight's right, you know, spoiler height's right. 
we shouldn't have to do that. The post tech is where it's at, you know, because like I said, he doesn't know what's inside the transmission. He don't know what's inside the rear end. So I don't want to pull my transmission out before the race and take a chance of not aligning the clutch back up right or the starter, you know, falling because someone didn't tighten the starter up. So that being said, I don't want to tear the car apart before the race, tear it apart after the race. You know, when we're going home, we'll tear it, we'll put it back together at the shop. And he told us, I'll let Jen go here in just a second, but he told us a, uh, last week that he doesn't even really know or he doesn't pre-decide before the race what he's going to check at the end of the night. He says most of the time he determines it by what he sees on the racetrack between the cars that are up front. And if he sees something that looks like one might be off, that's where he makes a decision on what he's going to check. And I think that's a good idea because not that he would tell anybody before anyway, but even he doesn't know what he's going to check when he starts the night. No, because, I mean, in a race, you can tell. You, you can usually look at the race cars out there racing on the track, and you can tell, it, not so much in the sportsman's, but you can tell if somebody's not spinning the tires. Like, okay, they got, you know, there's something going on there, or, you know, somebody's motoring them on past the flag stand. There might be something going on there. So, you know, it's like, it, it's really hard, especially like Arvindale and Citrus. There, there's not so much cheating, you know, the, the lightweight gears and all that stuff's really not going to show up there so you know when it comes to these short tracks he's just got to go through the motions and then just check people's stuff because even if we ran a cheater carburetor a cheater intake another 10 horsepower is not going to help you to short track so the short tracks I, don't, I feel like it's just going through the motions but you know the bigger tracks new Smyrna and the other places that he's done and you know still does that's where you know your eye can really tell you what you're looking for and while i have you and while we're on the tech you know, topic of conversation. How about the ride height rule? I hear so many complaints about the ride height rule. What's your thoughts on that? You know, I, I'm not a fan of ride height rules. My only ride height is back in the day, John Dykes, I want to say, isn't that op owner, correct? If I'm not mistaken. Um, mm -hmm. The rule was there, you get three laps. You spark for three laps, you're black flagged. And unsprung weight, you can't you can't fix so if you want to drag the cross member if you want to drag the foot box that's not, nothing but hurt yourself the only right. thing bikes went for was the racetrack you're tearing my racetrack up now so you throw sparks for three laps your bike's leg i kind of like that rule of thumb to where it's like ride heights immaterial because all, you know not so much in the sportsmen but supers were on bumps we set the car down as soon as you hit the brakes it's on the ground but if you drag this cross member you know, three laps, black flag. I mean, it can make it a lot simpler, but, you know, then again, you know, I'm not the tech guy. I don't want to be the tech guy. So if they want to do ride hikes, we pass them. So everybody else can pass them. It's just part of it. You know, I don't see, you know, we can cry and whine about everything. I, I just, you know, hey, give me the rules. We'll pass them. And everybody else has to pass them. We just go from there. And on another note, how bum was Keith Lilly pulling in the pits the other night? um yeah that was a pretty 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 bad deal it got his car pretty good but luckily it was all cosmetics but uh you know we had some pretty good hot rods looking wise anyway we wrapped them all up cleaned them up made them look good for the first race and uh it's a shame that they had to come home looking the way they did but we kind of knew that going into Arvindale. well he he's had, been, he he's might been be out of the off. seat for a while and they uh he's really came back strong and was having a really good run and disappointed to see it in that way but i think he's got some really good runs in him coming up the next couple races yeah, I mean, the, the ticket's having fun. He, he's, you know, he's up in age, he, he's getting older, so he, he's more having fun when, you know, makes it more entertaining for us because he just wants to have a blast, get out there and, and lead some laps and and show that the the older guys can still do it. So he's uh he's doing good. He, he's going to get a couple wins before it's all over with. So when do we see you back in the car, Jeff? Um, I'm going to actually get the Super out. I guess I'm going to go run New Smyrna and run that six-pack deal. I don't know that I'm going to run the uh, – the sportsman series. I think I'm going to kind of leave that to these guys. I don't know that I want to get into that deal. And Tyler and Keith plan on running the full Wheelman series. Um, I know that Tyler's going to run the Wheelman series. I don't know that Keith's going to run all of them. He's, uh, he's going to run all the Arvindale races. And I think he's going to bounce around with some of the Wheelman. but you know, we're, we're kind of going race by race. We're just going to race every week and until we get burnt out and do something different. Someone just asked, is David Hart going to go drive the other sportsmen? Um, he might do a few here and there with it. You know, Hart's been helping me for 20 plus years. Who knows? So he's part of the team, part of the family. So he wanted to play around a little bit. And uh, his night ended short. We didn't uh, we didn't really give him the time or day to really help him out. So we might uh, might play around a race or two with him for sure. That's awesome. Chris Hall said, go Schofields. We got a ton of stars, people saying great show tonight, people giving you a thumbs up. Um, don't want to keep you all night, but I really appreciate your 
input on everything. Um, it's always fun to chat with you guys. You have a great team around you. And Tyler, Tyler's a lot of fun to watch. He's a good young man and look forward to seeing what he does this year. Yeah, I appreciate it. He's, uh, he's, he's catching on. He's uh, a little smoother than his old man was. So he's, uh, he's got a little more potential. So if we can keep his attitude down and not, uh, you know, not act like his old man, I think he'll be great. <laughs> Sounds good. We appreciate you, Jeff. Thank you so much for coming on. Right. Y'all have a good Thanks, evening. Jeff. See ya. And that was Jeff Schofield kind of, we wanted to get him on with Ricky last week, but um, everyone had things come up. So wanted to get him on talking about tech, wanted to get him on after the Wheelman race and kind of talk about the first weekend of Wheelman. Um, we know Jeff's always good at being outspoken and telling us what he thinks. And we like hearing it, honestly. And do we still have quite a few viewers on, Jen, so we can make our announcement? Oh, yeah. We have 63 on still, 65 on still. So well, go we, ahead. We've all kind of brainstormed here. And I had an idea and got with the crew and something we want to try to do. I'm not sure exactly how it all play out. I still got some stuff in the works to announce for maybe prizes, but we're going to start here the month of January. Sunshine State Racing is going to have a driver of the month. The way we're going to do that is a, uh, we're going to watch the stats and watch wins and watch races. And we'll all uh, come together with our, I guess, with our team for driver of the month. And then uh, we'll take the whole team here at Sunshine State Racing and all vote independently without We'll all submit a like a blind vote so we can get a, a fair thing here on what who the driver of the month will be. And then we're gonna take those 12 driver of the month and Tyler Sontag with Speed Racer Photos working on a template for me now for the Sunshine State Driver of the Month. So we can get that out. We're gonna to try to get some sponsors to get a little gift for the driver of the month. And then at the end of the year, gonna to try to work on a big prize. Don't know what that'll be yet, but we're gonna take if you qualify as one of the 12 drivers of the month for Sunshine State Racing, then we'll do the same uh behind the scenes vote again. And uh, one of those will be our, I guess, 2022 driver of the year. And I think it's really cool to, to try to notice all the accomplishments of a lot of people around the state and their racing accomplishments for the year. Something I just think that we need to do to give back to our teams, our drivers, and I think something the fans will enjoy as well. Always, always trying to work on something different for you guys and something to kind of give back to our drivers and, um... We enjoy what we do most of the time. We get so much negativity, but it gets to us from time to time. But we're constantly seven days a week, 24 hours a day, thinking about race stuff and trying to come up with different ideas and different ways to make it better. Um, I can come up with a better word than negativity, but it does, at the end of the day, it just drives us to work harder. And when when we hear things or people say, oh, they do this or you don't do that or you this, and it just... That's one night I just got there thinking about it and what can we do? And this is an idea I threw out. Everybody was on board and hopefully the fans and drivers, I don't know if there's any comments coming in, but I'm looking forward to this uh, 12 drivers of the month. And then we get a driver of the year. Absolutely. John Smith said, great show tonight. Dave Gleason, thank you for the stars. John Smith, thank you for the stars. Um, Chris Fazillo said that was a great interview. Tater Tot's on. Hi, Tater Tot. Lee Keller, I nominate Richie two for two in the 22 in a track record. Thank you for throwing that out there. I haven't had enough caffeine. Um, I, I'm excited a, uh, on the 22nd, on the 417, we get to see coleslaw behind the seat of the bomber. Right? Lee Keller, or, nope, James Harvey, appreciate your show. We'll tune in again for sure. Thank you so much. Gary McFall, Jen, given the trophy in her pajamas, true story. Um, I only put on race shirts for for our video conferences, our Zoom calls, our Zoom shows. So luckily I'm in pajamas the rest of the time. Chris Hall, appreciate everything y'all do. We appreciate you guys. And thank you all for tuning in. Stay tuned for the driver of the month. We'll be announcing more and kind of what our giveaways are. They'll, it'll probably be a different prize each month just to kind of switch things up. And if uh, there's any, any companies or anybody that wants to come on to, to help sponsor those prizes, We'll be willing to, to get your name out there and help promote you and, and give those giveaways. And I'm going to work on something really special for the driver of the year. Got a meeting coming up with somebody, and I think he'll work with us on it, but I can't announce anything right now. He loves me, so, yeah, he'll work with us. Hey, if, if Ronnie Masello is on, did we read between the lines, Jen, when you're not doing the show, or are you running top of us? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm done. I'm done with y'all. But that's not it. Any more comments? <laughs> 
Um, any more comments? Anything else? Oh, Jake Perkins. Thanks again for having me. See you guys at Citrus. Have fun at the top list 200. Thank you so much for coming on. Congratulations again to you and your team. You guys are some of the best in the pits and we really are excited um, to see how the Wilman series goes this year and to see all of our sportsmen guys and how they do. Huge thanks to Schofield as well for coming on. Um, love chatting with them guys. Look forward to seeing what Tyler and Keith does this year. I was so bummed for Keith. Man, I was bummed for Keith. That car was beautiful. It, and it will be again, but let's run through really quick. Uh, this weekend, I don't think there's racing anywhere. A lot of banquets going on, but we got some huge races coming up the weekend of the 21st and 22nd that I don't have full schedules in front of me. I'm going to run off memory. If you remember any, I forget, Jen, go ahead. But the 21st and 22nd, we got a, the BG product Southern Sprint Car Series down at 417 and Pro Trucks. Uh, Showtime has the big $10,000 to win uh, Florida State Championship late model race with open wheel modified. And I believe they're running some trucks there. Uh, it's the Rick Sermons race. I'm going to try to get somebody on to talk about that next week's show to help push it up at Citrus. A lot of racing coming up on the 22nd. And I believe either the week before that, we'll have to go to the carnac.com schedule and I don't have it in front of me, but uh, East Bay starts speed week sometime right in there and all these dirt tracks are going to be kicking up for some awesome shows. So it's a little bit chilly. Hopefully Ronnie can get us these hoodies really soon, but a, uh, there's going to be a lot of racing over the next month and a half and January and February is going to be hard for us to vote for driver of the month. Cause there's going to be some people that's got a chance to win multiple races. Absolutely. Um, Chris commented bolts five zero. Yeah. So when we started the show, it was one zero. <laughs> Now it's 5-0, so I'll take that any day. Roar at Daytona is starting. Um, James said Dotham Motorsports Park opens the season on the 15th if we like dirt racing. We like all things racing. Um, and if you're jonesing for racing this weekend, the SCCA is holding an event at uh, Sebring. I'm going to try to make it over this Sunday to get some coverage, some photos, and maybe some live video. But, uh, I mean, if you're really jonesing Saturday, Sunday, Sebring, uh, a lot of great uh, racing going on over there as well. In Speed Weeks next week at East Bay, starting up um, Winter Nationals, so not snowmobile racing. That's one thing. I can I can watch it if I'm sitting at home, but not if I'm standing out in the cold. But um, looks like we're going to be off this weekend because there's really no racing going on. So I hope everyone enjoys their weekend. If you think of anything, hit us up. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the support. Thank you for staying tuned. Thank you to our guests. We appreciate you guys, and we'll see you soon. See you next week, everybody.